Greetings guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I want to take some time to take a closer look at Simon Mizrani's Jurassic World. While the fourth installment in the film series gave us a look at just what Jurassic World could be, there is surprisingly a lot missing from the film. The absence of certain animals, attractions and buildings left a lot of people with a pretty obscure understanding of what the park was like. Luckily, you can find all kinds of information and even a park map online if you do a bit of research. But today, I'll be giving you a complete park tour of Jurassic World, so let's get started. In order to access Isla Nublar, you'll have to get on a plane to Costa Rica in South America, from where you'll be able to take a ferry to the island. The arrival point, located on the south coast of the island, welcomes everyone to Isla Nublar, as guests leave the ferry and walk towards the monorail station. The monorail will take guests through lush jungle before arriving at the Jurassic World gates, welcoming everyone to the park. Now the monorail stops off at many different places around the park, but the first is directly behind the Innovation Center. The Innovation Center takes the appearance of a circular pyramid from the exterior and acts as the heart and centerpiece of the park. Its slogan, where technology meets prehistory, really stays true to the purpose of the building. The Innovation Center is an interactive museum in which guests can learn all about dinosaurs through holograms, facts on the walls, and interactive dig sites. Here, guests will also be able to see how the dinosaurs are created by walking through a hallway that runs directly through the science labs. This gives guests the opportunity to see the dinosaur DNA extracted from amber and the different eggs ready to hatch. The lab is the second room in the Innovation Center and is situated directly behind the museum. Now directly south, the Innovation Center opens up to the busiest place in the park, Main Street. This open air plaza is a long street that connects the Innovation Center to the Mosasaurus Lagoon just south. Main Street is filled with all kinds of different shops, including gift shops, restaurants, arcades, and bars. This is also the site of the famous Spinosaurus skeleton. The park in general also has a lot of product placements, the most famous being the Samsung Innovation Center as it should be called. Main Street eventually splits off, and then heads east and west respectively. Now, just south of this is the Mosasaurus Lagoon, a large pool built for the aquatic Mosasaurus. This lagoon is fenced off around the perimeter, although there is a viewing arena on the west side. This viewing arena is where guests can see the Mosasaurus feeding show, in which a great white shark is fed to the aquatic reptile. This arena can also lower beneath the ground, so that guests can see it underwater. Directly south of the lagoon are three of the only park's hotels, leaving accommodation available for the park's 22,000 guests. This also gives a great view of the park for when they run out onto the balcony. Now just north of the hotels, and south of the pool, is a tropical beach-like resort, with a small beach that connects to the bottom of the lagoon. Now, there is a small fence separating the beach from the main part of the lagoon, so you won't have to worry. Heading back to Main Street, we can go along the eastern boardwalk to reach the Pachycephalosaurus Arena. This dirty, rocky enclosure is exactly what it sounds like. An arena in which the defensive capabilities of the Pachycephalosaurus are observed through headbutting. Just before the 2015 incident, one of these dinosaurs escaped, but was quickly sedated and moved back to its enclosure. Now, just east of Main Street is the Gentle Giant's Petting Zoo. These enclosures hold the only baby dinosaurs in the park. This currently includes the Triceratops, the Gallimimus, the Apatosaurus, the Stegosaurus, and the Parasaurolophus. Here, guests can walk inside the enclosures and among the dinosaurs themselves. Guests can also ride the Triceratops and feed some of the dinosaurs. Now just opposite this, on the west of Main Street, is the T-Rex Kingdom. This octagonal paddock features a redwood forest-like environment and the park's only T-Rex. This Tyrannosaurus happens to be the same one from the original park in 1993. Here, the Rex is fed goats and it's lured by flares which are often thrown by a man standing in a small but sturdy cage inside the paddock. Guests will be able to view the dinosaur through a fake log that runs through the middle of the enclosure or through seats at the top looking down into the paddock. During the 2015 incident, the Rex was released from its paddock and lured into battle with the Indominus. Now, directly west of the Innovation Center is the Water Park. I'm sure you can all imagine what this looked like. It was an attraction that didn't feature any dinosaurs, but we really don't know much about it. So next, we'll go up north to the Gyrosphere Valley. Here, guests will be able to ride the Gyrosphere, an amazing machine made possible 
by size. Also known as a hamster ball, guests can hop on one of these at the gyrosphere station Enjoy the ride. and ride amongst a variety of herbivores in what is known as gyrosphere valley. This open plain features full grown triceratops, stegosaurus, parasaurolophus and apatosaurus. Now not far from this is Gallimimus valley. Along with the parasaurolophus and the apatosaurus, this features the Edmontosaurus and of course the Gallimimus. Here, guests can also ride in a unique safari truck through the valley and amongst the flock. Now not far from here is the Cretaceous Cruise. This ride takes advantage of one of the island's natural rivers, letting guests kayak through the jungle and past a variety of dinosaurs. This is home to some of the peaceful herbivores, including the Apatosaurus, the Parasaurolophus, the Stegosaurus and the Microceratus. Along with these are the carnivores the Metriocanthosaurus, the Baryonyx, and the Suchomimus. We can assume that these two Spinosaurids ate fish that flow down the river. These carnivores are separated from the guests and from the other dinosaurs through the park's invisible fences. Now this river will eventually flow down to the Isla Nublar aviary, the home of the only pterosaurs in the park. This dome features a large, rocky environment with small rivers containing fish as an appropriate food source. This enclosure features the Pteranodon and the Dimorphodon. During the 2015 incident, the Indominus Rex broke into the aviary, releasing the pterosaurs into the park. Now if you want to learn a little bit more, then we'll have to go into the restricted area, featuring three key enclosures. The first of these is a temporary enclosure, holding the Ankylosaurus. This was also attacked during the 2015 incident, and one of the Ankylosaurs was killed by the hybrid dinosaur. Now just along the east coast is the Raptor Paddock, home to the only Velociraptors in the park, Blue, Charlie, Echo, and Delta. This paddock was a small octagonal shape, covered with bark and several tropical ferns here and there. It was never open to the public, and instead was used by Owen Grady to train the raptors. It had a cross catwalk going across the top, and it featured small cages within it, including head restraints so that employees could get a closer look at the animals. Here the animals were lured with a pig, but were fed small white mice. Finally, we have the paddock of the one and only Indominus Rex, the only hybridized dinosaur in the park. This dinosaur was contained in a heavy concrete paddock, featuring eight 12 meter walls in the shape of an octagon. Inside was another barky environment, only this time it featured a lot more jungle to hide the beast. This animal was often fed with a slab of meat on a crane and then lowered into the paddock. This paddock featured a viewing area on the side, designed solely for employees to view the dinosaur. This was also where paddock supervisor Nick worked, but he was horrible at his job, eating sandwiches all day. Obviously, this animal escaped its paddock and killed two workers before proceeding to destroy the rest of the park. This was the last time we ever got to see the Indominus paddock. Now, I want to ask you guys what you think of the park. Do you prefer the original? Which attraction is your favourite? Personally, I really like the Cretaceous Cruise, as it features one of my favourite dinosaurs, the Suchomimus. Now, it is worth noting that absolutely everything in the park was burnt up by Mount Sebo in 2018, and that was the last time we ever saw it. Now before I leave, I just want to thank all of you for taking the time to watch this video. I'm extremely thankful for that, and I hope you'll check out more of my channel in the future. Thanks guys. Cheers.